A claim circulating on the internet and on some social media platforms as a cosmological event called the aphelion phenomenon will cause colder than normal weather for several months this year. That's due to the increased distance between planet Earth and the sun during this event. This information related to the relationship between the aphelion phenomenon as the cause of coughs and colds. What is really happening? Let's unpack this now with somebody who will know more than anybody knows, Professor Guy Mijli, an expert on global change sciences at Stellenbosch University. Prof, good afternoon. You certainly know more than I do in this regard. What is aphelion phenomenon? Can we just start there? Well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Dan. Uh, very briefly, the uh, the Earth um, right, uh, goes around the Sun uh, in a in a in an orbit that's not perfectly circular. Um, it's slightly uh, off circular, so it's called an ellipse, which results in periods of time when the Earth is a little bit further away from the Sun, and other times when it's a little bit closer. And uh, this this phenomenon over very, very long time scales has in the past uh, led to some shifts in climate. But currently, uh, it's, it, it's not a significant driver of the climate. And uh, what's driving the climate is, is the phenomenon of winter and summer. So uh, not, not the aphelion phenomenon. Uh, this is not uh, an appreciable effect on climate uh, at this time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I got this on my, on my other day on my WhatsApp that uh, shows that or claims that uh, uh, from now right up to, to August, we're going to be having colder weather than we've ever done. Uh, 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 and then I read that this event would normally happen on a particular day rather than weeks and months. And there's a particular day this year that is expected uh, to take place. Uh, can you clarify that, Prof? Well, uh, I, I presume it's... Um uh, associated with the, the shortest day of the year in the Southern Hemisphere, which would be the same as the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. And that should give you a hint that uh, for the planet as a whole, this uh, does not have a, a, an overall effect on the planet's climate. Uh, I, I, I can say that um, uh, the main driver of uh, our climate is seasonality, the switch from summer to winter, because we're in a latitude where that has a very significant effect on climate, but that the long-term changes in climate, which are driven by uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide, which we're adding to the atmosphere, methane and other greenhouse gases, uh, have long since overridden these very, very small uh, effects on climate. So we're seeing long-term changes, warming and the kind of flooding that you're seeing in KwaZulu-Natal now, which is due to more moisture in the atmosphere uh, which leads to heavier rainfall events heavier floods and these are the things that we've got to start focusing on and stop fiddling around with arguments about aphelion and these these minor issues i mean these are very interesting to understand and uh, give us insights into how the climate operates but they cannot be used to uh, distract us from the the larger problem that we face the challenges yeah. that we face real and people have been causing a lot of, of, of nonsensical claims about this Aphelion thing. Then I thought, let's just chat to somebody who will be in the know. Thank you very much, Prof, for clarifying. But on I'm that matter, <laughs> on that yes. matter that you say we need to focus on, I mean, look at KwaZulu Natal today and yes. yesterday. I mean, it's like unbelievable amount of rain that is coming. Just last week, I interviewed a, a meteorologist here on ENC who says, no, seasonally you'll get this kind of rainfalls and stuff. But when you think about what we saw just a few weeks ago, I think there were four cyclones which heavily damaged parts of Madagascar, northern Mozambique, all the way into Malawi, and, and some of the rain also made its way to to Zimbabwe and the eastern parts of South Africa I mean it's really happening I mean the impact of, of climate change is with us there's there's no question that that's true uh, these are patterns if you look globally uh, we're seeing similar patterns we saw last year massive floods in Europe floods in the UK uh, North America we saw a heat wave in uh, in, in, in the far north the northern latitudes temperatures that they haven't ever seen before in the, in, the, in the record. So, yeah, when you put it all together, individual events, it's difficult to say this, is, this particular event is due to climate change, but it's consistent with all the modelling and all our projections, <clears throat> and we ignore these at, at our peril. 
we've got to really get our act together to start adapting and coping with these sorts of changes. Uh, there's, uh, there's not, uh, there's not let the aphelionists uh, distract us. Yes, I was just about to say, because that could be kind of a destruction to, to look at something that's so far away that happens now and again, that has no direct impact. To try and blame it for our, our climate challenges will be a little bit nonsensical. And thanks for clarifying, for clarifying that. Should we anticipate, though, on the real climate change impact, uh, more severe weather, more intense, uh, severe storms, for example, now and again? I mean, we had, what, Cyclone die just the other day, a few years ago from Mozambique, that almost destroyed the city of Beira in Mozambique, the second largest uh, city, and it dumped water all the way up to Botswana. Indeed, uh, uh, you make a very good point. Uh, there are two things actually going on. One is that the, the tracks uh, of these storms may well be changing their position. So areas that are not adapted to these sorts of conditions are getting more and more of them. Uh, and the other thing is that the intensity of the storms may be increasing because of increasing sea, sea surface temperatures, more moisture in the atmosphere, heavier rainfall events. Uh, you put those two things together and uh, you start to get events like this, which we need to, uh, we need to start adapting to. And uh, it's, it's going to take, uh, take money, it's going to take science, it's going to take engineering. Nature-based solutions, we are going to have to use all the, the tricks in our, in our book that are available to us to help people adapt and to save lives and to make sure that our futures are sustainable for our children and their grandchildren. Thank you very much, Professor Guy Measley, an expert in global change sciences, the University of Stellenbosch, is talking about this uh, aphelion phenomenon, which some people are nonsensically linking it, falsely so, to weather changes in the world. But he also weighed in and said the focus needs to be on the real stuff that is happening, like the rains we are seeing in KwaZulu-Natal, the damage that's being caused. We've seen so many cyclones. I mean, four of them were very damaging between January and March in our region of Southern Africa, all the way from Madagascar to Mozambique to Malawi, Zimbabwe as well, got a bit of that heavy rain. So that's where the focus is and how do we protect the future generations to sustain the way we know our lives or the life we know today uh, that we're enjoying as human beings.